we are all looking for true and lasting happiness. The issue we face as humans, where to find it? We already know when we look outside of us, in our jobs, relationships, and other circumstances, we touch it, but it soon passes, and we are left waiting for the next best thing happening. There's a lot of waiting for happiness. There's other option though, to look for peace and happiness inside of us. That's what I did 10 years ago when I started practicing mindfulness meditation. Mindfulness is staying in the present moment with kindness and curiosity. It is our ability to be here and now. In other words, knowing what you are doing while you are doing it. Why mindfulness meditation? Well, because I had heard meditation is good and I also wanted to get rid of my stressful thoughts. Back then I was working in the bank and I, that's how I approach meditation. If I can get rid of my stressful thoughts, I will be happy. Well, that quite didn't work out it, because it was like telling your mind not to think about little pink elephant. And the more I tried to stop the thoughts, the worse I think I was at meditation. So it is not about stopping thoughts. And I would like to share three things what I've learned about the mind. First one, it is constantly thinking thoughts. We cannot stop the thoughts coming into our mind. It is like our heart is beating, our lungs are breathing, our mind is thinking. That is the function of the mind. And mostly it is in the past or in the future. It is very rarely in the present moment. And you might ask, you might ask, what is so special about the present moment? Well, it is very special because the present moment is the only moment we actually have to see, to hear, to taste, to experience life. And it's also very powerful because the present moment is only moment you have a choice to choose different thought, to choose different action. You cannot do it neither in the past, neither in the future. It is just in the present moment. So it's very powerful. It's worth to be in the present moment and to show up for it. But it gets more interesting. The mind has this tendency, when it's in the past or in the future, to be negative. Imagine you are Imagine you're doing presentation and out of 10 slides, nine you do well, but then on the last one, you stumble, you forget what you want to say. What are you thinking about at the end of presentation? The nine slides that went well or the one where you forgot? The one where you forgot. And it's not your fault. That is the mind the brain, basically, because of evolution, the scientists have a name for it, and it's called negativity bias. Because of evolution, our brain has tendency to put more focus on the negative than on the positive experience. Because it was more important to remember the threat in the bushes than the delicious berry. So it's all about the survival. So knowing this, tendency that the storytelling mind has, well, it likes to make fantasies and catastrophes more than documentaries and happy ending stories, it's worth to know that there is always something else in the present moment. The mind, the brain sees the negative, but there's always something 
as the saying goes, there's other side of the story. There's something more. And, well, it sounds simple, but it's not easy. There is a, well, I like the, the story. It's an old Zen story. Uh, it's about the man riding on the horse. He's riding really fast. And there's another man on the road and he shouts, hey, where are you going? And the man on the horse says, I don't know, ask the horse. So this is, I like to see how our wild mind is when it takes us where it wants to take and we end up in the place where we don't want to be really. But here's the thing, you have the power to control the mind. You are the one on the horse. And the moment you can control the mind, the, the horse, the wild mind, is when you become aware of the present moment. That's how powerful it is. And the more you train it, the better you become at it. And it's similar to a gym. You, we already know that if we take one class in the gym, it won't change how we look. But we also know if we will continue going to the gym for several months, ooh, the results will come. As well as the healthy diet from one green juice, we won't change. But we, if we keep the diet, we will see the results. And that is similar with mindfulness practice. If we focus and discipline the mind, we will get better at it. And so through this journey, I discovered also, I will call it secret ingredient, because I truly, honestly did not know about it. So really this, as end of, it's really the practice of the happiness. But I want to share about um, one secret thing I did not know. And um, so when um, we, well, there's outer world, as you see, there are neighbors next to you, there are people sitting next to you, and we are taught a lot about being kind to each other, how to treat each other. But there's also inner world, it's our thoughts and emotions, and I was not told that there is inner world kindness. That is the kindness, how we speak and treat ourselves. And mindfulness was the practice that I discovered how harsh and self-critical I am in my daily life. And there's a lot of research on self-criticism and self-kindness. And one of the researchers is Christine Neff. And she is associate professor in um, University of Texas. And I've been in her lectures and she speaks about self-kindness and what she has discovered that when people are self-critical, it feeds the negative emotions to the level that can bring anxiety and even depression. So self-kindness is crucial for well-being and happiness. And what she suggests is um, when we struggle, we should speak to ourselves as we speak to our best friend. Use the language we would speak to our best friend. And I would like to share with you um, a technique I use. Uh, when I still know the self-critical thoughts or any negative thoughts really, and I call it observe technique. But before, let's, um, well, let's imagine you have a day. The day has started pretty well and you feel fine. But somehow during a day, you start to feel that weird feeling in the body. Something, you feel dissatisfied or something annoying is happening and you feel it in the body because body shows up the emotions. In that moment, ask yourself, what am I thinking now? And I am pretty sure it's something negative about yourself, people around, or the situation. And I use observe technique, what I call, in that moment, I observe the thought, the story the mind is telling. 
and I label it as a thought and I say to myself, I am now experiencing a negative thought. And what it does, it creates a distance between the thought and me and the thought loses its power. And um, so we really can think only one thought at a time. We might think we have hundreds of thoughts in the moment, but really it's a thought after thought. It's like a thought traffic. And there's one more thing you can do, because you, only you have the power and ability to do it. You can actually insert a new thought in any time of the day, in any situation. And the most powerful thought for happiness is the thought of gratitude. And, I, um, for example, and you can use it in any situation, uh, you're sitting in traffic and you start, the traffic jam is getting more and more and you can't get to your coastal town and on vacation or home and you start to hate all of them. And in that moment, when you see that thought, you can actually insert the thought of gratitude, which be, I'm so grateful that I have a car. Because there used to be days when I thought, probably everybody has taken a bus or a train. Or it's 9 p.m. in the evening, and you realize there are still dishes to wash, and you're like, oh, I'm so fed up. What about the fact that, because the mind shows that only one slide that is going wrong, there are nine more that are going well. What about the fact that you had just food on the table? What the fact that there is still in the fridge, that you have a roof over your head? So allowing that, knowing what the mind does and seeing those nine slides that are working well is the key for practicing happiness. And um, so I like to give that there is this I would say example of the gardening. Is there anyone who, who has garden or knows something about the gardening? Yeah. Can you raise hands? Yes, yeah, Sam. So, question. If you plant seeds in the spring and you never ever step a foot in the garden and you enter it on the 8th of September as for today, what would it look like? Would, it, would you have the harvest you go well expected? No, probably not. But if you plant the seeds and you water them and you take care of them, and when you step in this 8th of September, you will have a beautiful harvest. And I like to think about the mind as the garden. If we cultivate the seeds of gratitude daily, it's a beautiful place to live. So where do you start? In the now. Every moment is a possibility to start. The past is gone, you learn from it, you let it go. The future is not there, plan for it, but worrying is worthless. And um, if you are really serious about that, make a habit of setting up a meeting with yourself for three minutes as a start and get to know your mind. Train it and discipline it in the present moment and cultivate the seeds of gratitude. And as one of my favorite teachers, Eckhart Tolle, once said, realize deeply that the present moment is all you ever have. What do you do with it? The power is in you, so is the happiness. <laughs>